Hey guys, welcome back to my beauty stash or welcome if it is your first time here. Hello, my name is Steph. I would love to have you become part of our makeup family. So be sure to click on that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy watching. All right guys, so I have another new foundation to review for you all today. I am in foundation heaven. I have done so many foundation reviews already to start off 2022. I would say 2022 is off to a good start. What do you guys think? Today I'm trying out this new one from NARS. This is the Light Reflecting Advanced Skincare Foundation and I picked up the shade Gobi. Gobi is described as light with neutral undertones and I will tell you this, I have it on right now, but this is the best shade that I have found to fit my skin tone yet. I have two other shades in another foundation from NARS. I have Yukon and I have Fiji. Neither one of them are a correct shade match. One is too pink, one is too yellow, one is too dark. This one, Gobi, if you have a similar skin tone to mine, this is a perfect match for me. Perfect, perfect match, spoiler alert. So this one retails for $49 on the Sephora website. I did do the curbside, so I picked it up at my local Sephora. It does come in 36 different shades. I highly recommend going into the store and getting shade matched, just because a lot of you have told me that you have found difficulty when finding a NARS foundation uh, to best suit your skin tone. So that is gonna be my recommendation to you first and foremost. So this foundation is another one of those foundations similar to the Charlotte Tilbury, the beautiful skin foundation that has uh, those skincare claims behind it, meaning the more you use it, the better your skin is supposed to look over time. Guys, please don't, um, don't buy too much into that. Um, I'm sure the ingredients in it are fine, but what's really going to help transform your skin is how you take care of it when you don't have any makeup on. Um, meaning you're doing a regular skincare routine, you're maybe uh, getting seen by a dermatologist and that doctor is helping you get your skin concerns in order, um, you're eating right, you're drinking your water, you're wearing your sunscreen, and you're just protecting your skin as best you can. Makeup, while it might have some amazing ingredients, it's not going to be transformative to your skin. You're not going to see a reduction in dark spots, in wrinkles, anything like that. Yes, we want what we put on our face to have good products to be formulated with the cleanest products as possible, but makeup is not skincare, and it's not going to be that miracle worker for your skin. So I definitely want to say that just because I've seen so many foundations coming out with those skincare claims and I kind of wish they wouldn't do that but uh, I am not the owners of these companies. So let me give you some information about this new foundation from NARS. It says it's an advanced makeup skincare hybrid foundation with a natural finish. I love a natural finish to my foundation. It says that it's going to quickly blur and smooth while visibly improving skin's clarity over time. It is going to provide a medium coverage. It is buildable. I will tell you that right now. It is buildable. Of course, it's a liquid formulation. Some of the highlighted ingredients are biomimetic oat, I hope I pronounced that right, which visibly improves clarity by reducing the appearance of redness. Japanese lily turf, which supports a strong skin barrier by helping maintain moisture. And cacao peptides and milk thistle. Cacao. I don't know if I pronounced that right either, which is going to minimize the negative effect of blue light, love that, and environmental stressors. Now, for those of you wondering if this contains fragrance, I don't smell anything when I apply this foundation, but it does say it has less than 1% synthetic fragrance, which has been the norm for the last few foundations that I've been trying out from Sephora. Um, it does say it does not contain parabens, formaldehydes, um, mineral oil, phthalates, so on and so forth. I'll have it linked to Sephora. That way you can read up on the ingredients to see if this is something um, that is going to work for you or 
it may be something that you want to stay clear of altogether. Um, a quick background on me and my skin type for those of you that is your first time watching one of my foundation reviews. Hi, welcome. I uh, love having you here. Hope you'll consider subscribing. I am 39 years old and I have normal to oily skin. I am oily primarily in my T-zone and a little bit into here. Um, right now my major concerns are large visible pores and fine lines under my eye area. Um, I like a foundation that's going to give medium natural coverage, which is exactly what this one says um, it's going to do. Um, I even like, you know, full coverage, of course. I always like to spot conceal or build up foundation right here on the sides of my cheeks because this is where I have old acne scars and minor discoloration. I am not opposed to trying any type of foundation and you'll find that out really quick if you scroll through my foundation playlist I'll have in a pinned comment so you can check out all the foundation reviews I've done these last two and a half years that I've been on YouTube. It's one of my most favorite things to do here guys. So I try skin tints. I've been trying a few skin tints already in 2022 and of course a lot of them in 2021. Skin tints are not going anywhere, but some are better than others. I've tried tinted moisturizers. I don't mind a matte finish. I don't mind a dewy finish. I just want to have a nice, healthy glow to my skin with good coverage. And I want to pretty much stay matte in my T-zone, especially my nose, and then just glow everywhere else. So we're going to be giving this new one from NARS a two-day, 10-hour wear test. On day one, I will be wearing it by itself with no helping products, like no primer, no setting powder, no spot concealing, nothing like that. And then this is actually day two when I have it on, and obviously I have it on the way I would do my makeup on any given day. If you're wondering about the eye look, I did use the color pop new all amethyst eyeshadow palette this is a new drop over at Ulta Beauty you guys uh, saw this video go up already because these videos are going up both in the same day just a few hours apart so I'll definitely have this linked up above in case you want to check it out in case you're curious about these looks I have going on I did create three looks with this palette and then of course the rest of the makeup that I'm wearing I will have it linked in the description box of today's video some of those things might be affiliate links so if you do end up shopping through them I Thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. So let's get started, guys. I am gonna give you guys some swatches. It'll be after the application portion of the video. And of course, I will have timestamps in the description box like I typically do with these videos. That way you can skip around to the parts that interest you the most. Um, I will be doing my periodic check-ins. That way you can see how it is wearing throughout the day. And that is pretty much it, guys. If y'all wanna see the new NARS Light Reflecting Advanced Skincare Foundation in action, keep on watching. All right, guys, so let's dive into this new foundation. Once again, I am wearing the shade Gobi, or that's the shade I'm going to be wearing. And that's it right there, very runny foundation. Now I'm gonna apply it first with a brush. I'll do that on the right side, and then I'll go in with a damp beauty sponge on the left. Now this is the day I am not wearing any helping products with this foundation, so no primer. All I have on is my skincare, my sunscreen. That's about it. I'm using my BK Beauty 101 foundation brush. You guys know that's my favorite. So I think the shade is pretty good. Finally, I've struggled with matching myself to NARS foundations. And I have two right now. They're, well, it's the same one. It's just in two different shades. And it's, um, you'll see it in the swatch photo. And I actually did a little YouTube uh, short, an Instagram reel where I feature those shades. Okay, so I'm liking the finish. It does say it's going to be medium buildable coverage with a natural finish. And that is exactly what I like in a foundation. Like that's perfect. Now, of course it has all those skincare claims, which We've already talked about that. Don't, don't buy into all of them, guys. So this is a very thin formula, but I do see that it is providing decent coverage. I would say it's a true medium coverage. We'll build it up in a bit. I'm just making sure everything's pressed in. Okay, so let me take a closer look at it. I definitely see that natural 
almost like a, a dewy finish to it. I'm just pressing in. There's really no brush stroke, so it applied well with the foundation brush. And I'm going to build it up right in here since I'm not going to do any spot concealing, but I think it looks pretty good. So with, without. Okay, now I'm going to use this damp sponge and I'm going to take what I have left and start pressing it in over here. I'm not smelling anything, any scent. So definitely the sponge, I've already used up everything and I've only done like this top portion. Now I've tried the Sheer Glow foundation in the past and that just wasn't for me. I think I ended up returning it. I just didn't like it. So for those of you that enjoy that foundation but still want a little bit more coverage, this, this might be something that you want to check out because I remember that one being very minimal coverage and maybe that was one of the reasons why I didn't like it. It's been a while that I, I don't try it. I actually don't, I don't have a lot of NARS products in my stash. I have a, a corrector, which we're going to use today, a under eye corrector. And I have some lipsticks. That's about it. I have de decluttered a lot from NARS. Okay, so definitely I had pumped out two more, like smaller pumps and they're gone. So definitely recommend going in with a brush first and then maybe just using a damp sponge just to press everything in. Love the shade. I think the shade is the perfect match for me. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little bit more because the sides of my cheeks are the areas that I really wanna spot conceal. So I'm gonna get some with the brush and I'm just going to stipple that right in here and I'll go over it with the sponge right now. Okay, so I would say this looks this looks almost full coverage. What do you guys think? I mean, now that I built it up, wow. And look at that shade. That's such a good shade, Gobi. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is, this is the NARS corrector that I have. Um, I have the lightest shade. It's the Radiant Creamy Corrector. So I'm just gonna add a little bit right here. I know I kind of covered it up with foundation, but that's okay. Now I do have a NARS concealer. It's the one in the pot, but I don't use it for concealing. <laughs> I use it like when I do a cut crease or something or as an eyeshadow base. All right, now for concealer, I'm gonna go in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Concealer. I have the shade three. And I'm only gonna do that under the eye area. No spot concealing. I actually don't even feel I need spot concealing. This foundation really did a good job of building up. Guys, it is so windy outside, like so windy. So if you're hearing noises, like background noises, it is the wind. We're under a wind advisory. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful sunny day, but the wind is, ugh. All right, so I'm gonna set my under eye area with a little bit of the Urban Decay All Nighter Loose Setting Powder. Now I'm thinking I should have added that corrector before I applied the foundation because I feel like I have a little bit of orange going on for peach under my eyes. Guys, I decided to remove the concealer. I wasn't liking the way it looked, so I'm just gonna add I'm not even going to do the corrector. I'm just putting a little bit of the concealer. All right, guys. So this is how the complexion is looking, how it's going to stay. I don't think I'm going to add any blush, bronzer, or highlighter today. I'll probably add brows and some mascara. i um, not too sure if I'm going to do an eye look today. I do have a couple errands I need to run this afternoon. So um, let's see. It still feels a little bit tacky. But I love the coverage, I love the shade, it feels good, it's a lightweight foundation. And we'll see how this is going to do. I am gonna be wearing a mask for maybe three to four hours today, um, later this afternoon. So we'll see how it works. I will probably do a check-in before I start running those errands wearing the mask. It'll be around the midday check-in. And then uh, of course at the end of the day, I will give you guys my final thoughts on this day one wear test. So I'll see you guys a little bit later. 
This is the new NARS Light Reflecting Advanced Skincare Foundation in the shade Gobi. This retails for $49 on the Sephora website and there are 36 shades to choose from. In the center is the shade Gobi in the new Light Reflecting Foundation. And then on the top and bottom are two different shades I have in the NARS natural radiant foundation the bottom is yukon and the top is fiji and this is indoors without flash now here are those shades swatched indoors with flash and here's what those shades look like outdoors in natural lighting all right guys so this is the four hour check-in with this NARS foundation. And I wanna point out up here, right here around my forehead, it looks like it has come off. And sometimes I do this a little number. So I can definitely see where it's kind of broken up in this area. And right here around my nose, like it's already breaking apart. And even like right here, you can see my pores. Like I have large pores in through here. But you can see where it's already starting to break up. And like I feel, it feels like it's still a little bit tacky. Like I just feel like I can feel the foundation on my skin, if that makes any sense. Like it feels makeup-y. And um, I can definitely see where my oil is starting to come through on my forehead, on my nose. I, this isn't looking great right now. And it doesn't feel too great right now. It just feels like I need to set it. So... I don't know how this is going to wear. I am fixing to go run my errands and I'm going to be wearing a mask for like the next three hours. So I'm a little nervous for it, especially because I feel like it's already kind of coming off on my nose. Um, I don't know. I don't know. For me, I think this is definitely going to work better when I set it and use a primer and some setting spray. So I have a feeling tomorrow, hopefully, is going to go a lot better than today is. But this is how it's looking. Shade is perfect, but this is where we're at at the four hour check-in. Not looking too great. Expected something a little bit better. And I am really going to be curious to see what this looks like at the 10 hour mark. So I'll check in with you guys later. All right, guys. So this is the nine hour check-in. I'm just getting home from running my errands. Um... This looks bad. This looks really bad. You can see here it has all rubbed off from wearing the mask. Um, even right here, it's come off and it's breaking up. Right in here, it is breaking up. It just, ugh, it feels yucky. I'm ready to take off my foundation. Um, this didn't do well. I, I'm I have higher expectations for it tomorrow when I wear powder. Like all day, I just felt like I needed powder. Like this foundation for me and my normal to oily skin, it calls for powder. So I'm hoping that tomorrow it's going to perform a lot better. I am going to wear a primer and a setting spray as well. I'll probably do the rest of my makeup tomorrow. Um, just the traditional way that I would normally, you know, wear my makeup with bronzer and all that stuff. But right now, it's not, it's not looking good. Like at all, it looks... It looks pretty bad. I, I just I feel like I need to go wash my face. So I'm going to end this uh, wear test a little bit early. Also because I'm feeling a little funny. Um, I don't want to say I'm coming down with anything. But um, my allergies have been, you know, acting up these last few days. And uh, I feel like I just need to, you know, go take my Benadryl and call it an early night. But um, yeah, so we're going to leave it here. I'm having a good brow day liking the way my brows came out and I'm liking the mascara. So that's all good. I'm going to leave the, the wear test here for today. And I will check in with you guys in the morning after I apply my makeup so that we can see how the foundation is wearing with those helping products. So I'll see you guys then. Good morning, guys. This is day two of me trying out the new one from NARS. And this is how the complexion is looking. What do you guys think? I think it looks really nice. So let me tell you what I went in with. I actually used two different primers. So I have this new one from One Size. Well, it's not new. It's new to me. This is the Secure the Blur Makeup Magnet Primer. So this is a mattifying primer. I did this right in this area up here, like on my T-zone, and right on my nose, like especially on my nose, a little bit on my chin, and then a little bit in this area right here, just because this foundation is definitely more of like a 
moisturizing foundation, um, a more kind of like a radiant foundation. So I kind of felt that um, my oil was starting to come through earlier than usual. So I'm hoping the primer is going to be able to uh, help with that. And then the second primer I went in with is the new one from e.l.f. This is the Power Grip Primer. I primarily focus this on the perimeter of my face. And I did do a little bit on my chin, but more so like right out here in this area. So um, that's what I did as far as primer. For concealer, I'm not wearing concealer. I took the foundation up right up under my eyes. I put it on my eyelids. I mean, I put it everywhere. It has really good coverage. That's what I do like about this foundation, the coverage. And then I just set my under eye area and my T-zone with the Urban Decay All Nighter Loose Setting Powder. And then for the perimeter of my face, the Dior Backstage Powder No Powder in the shade 1N. And then for... um setting spray i used the morphe and i used the moira here it is the more moira micro dot uh, setting spray this is going to provide oil control um and it has retinol and hyaluronic acid herbal and floral extracts this is a really good one these have the same type of sprayers that like aerosol spray i love these both so so much and that's it um i am going to be making a run over to ulta i have a return and then i'm going to see what new color pop items they got in stock because there was a major ColourPop drop on Ulta's website and I want to see if my local store has any of those items. If not, I'm going to end up ordering some of them online, but uh, you might get two videos today because if I find the eyeshadow palette that I'm looking for, then I'm most definitely going to get that video up in the same day as likely this video goes up. So I have a busy day ahead of me. I will check in with you guys in about five hours for the midday check-in and then of course at the end of this day, to wrap up this two-day 10-hour wear test with the new NARS Light Reflecting Advanced Skincare Foundation. Stay tuned. All right, guys, this is the five-hour check-in with this new NARS foundation, and I just got back from running some errands. Guys, no joke, I wore a mask for about maybe 30 minutes, and you can clearly see it's already come off on the tip of my nose. I had sunglasses on, it kind of rubbed off there and under my eyes, I told you to use this as concealer. It really, really settled into those fine lines. And I wanted to try that because this is where I have the most fine lines. And I know some of you, you might have fine lines elsewhere and you'd like to know if this is going to settle into them. Well, it did. And I did powder it down to try and prevent that, but Mm, that didn't work out too great. I'm not, I'm not very happy with it. I'm not really happy with it. Uh, the powder did set it. So it feels a lot better today than it did yesterday, but uh, it just looks okay. I'll be back at the end of the day to wrap up this two day, 10 hour wear test and we'll see what it's looking like guys. We'll see. All right, guys, we've come to the end of this uh, two-day, 10-hour wear test with this new NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. This is how my complexion is looking. It doesn't look bad. You know, it doesn't look bad. Has it looked better with other foundations at this point? Yes. And I am going to compare. You all wanted me to compare this to the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation, as well as to the new or new reformulated uh, Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. So I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But um, I think it looks so much better, like 10 times better today at this point than it did yesterday. Yesterday, it was a hot mess and I had serious doubts, concerns with it. But uh, you pairing this today with the mattifying primer, the gripping primer, the powder, everything, I was a little concerned at the five hour mark, but it seems to have just, you know, settled down. And I did apply bronzer and a little bit of blush. And I kind of think maybe that just all helped it pull together. I don't know, but it looks okay. I, I do think it looks makeup-y like in here. I mean, it's already been 10 hours and I'm fixing to have dinner right now. Um, but I'm not overly shiny. I think my oil is just starting to come through. So I definitely think the mattifying primer helped out a lot. That's a nice one from One Size Beauty. 
Um, I'll have that linked in the description box. Um, definitely check that out if you are a full-on oily skin or just oily in uh, your T-zone like I am. Um, and then, of course, the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer on the perimeter of my face. And then definitely setting it with powder. I think that's how this foundation is going to work best for those of you who have a similar skin type to mine. Now, if you're dry skin... I think this will work just fine and it'll be up to you whether you want to set it with a, a light finishing powder or whatnot, but it is definitely a moisturizing, a hydrating foundation. And if you're full on oily, stay clear of this. Don't try it. You're not going to like it. If you have oily all over, don't even come near this. I, I Even with setting it with powder and a mattifying primer, I still, I, I don't think this is going to be for you. I think if you have normal skin, dry skin, combo skin, anything but full on oily, I think you might be able to work with this one. Is it my favorite NARS foundation? No, I still like that naturally uh, radiant foundation a little bit better. This is way thinner though than that one. That one's a kind of a thicker formula. This is a very thin formula. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're a fan of the uh, NARS Skin Glow Foundation, that's a very, um, also a thin formula, but very light coverage you're probably going to like this one if you're looking for more coverage because I feel like I got a full coverage out of this. It's definitely medium and definitely buildable. I definitely think you can get this to full coverage. Once again, the shade I have is Gobi and that is a perfect shade match for me. It is described as light with neutral undertones. I have Fiji, I have Yukon in the natural radiant foundation and those are not my shades. So if you think you're along the lines of uh, my same coloring here, then I would try Gobi, but I 100% recommend you go to the store and get shade matched in there because NARS foundations, they can be tricky. Now with, where do I have it? Uh, the Dior Forever Skin Glow Foundation. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. This looks great all day long. I don't even want to put these in the same category because this Dior far exceeds this new one from NARS and they're the same price. No, this one's 52 and the NARS is 49. If you're stuck between the two, go for the Dior, hands down. You won't regret that purchase. Now, if you're wanting to try the new Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation, it lives up to its name. It is a beautiful foundation. I found that this worked better for me when I powdered down my T-zone. This is a good one. And I wouldn't even put it again in the same category as this new one from NARS. This one and the Dior are just so far above it. Um, so yeah, that those are those are my thoughts on that. If you want a drugstore alternative for this one, I would say look at the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. This one has hyaluronic acid in it, and it also provides a natural finish just the way this um, new one from NARS does. This Catrice is a beautiful one. Unfortunately, it's no more, uh, it's no longer sold at Ulta. Catrice is now selling directly on their website site and I think you can find it at Amazon so I'll have it linked to wherever I can find it. That is a beautiful beautiful foundation and it's only like 11 or 12 dollars so 12 bucks versus 49. I'll let you make up your own mind but this one from NARS uh, it's just okay. It's just okay. I'm not going to give it any thumbs up but I'm not giving it any thumbs down. We'll give it a sideways thumb. I'm just... I'm just neutral with it. I think it's just because, you know, I'm a normal to oily skin type and it just didn't work for me. They can't all work for every single skin type and I understand that. Um, so I hope this review was helpful. I hope, you know, the shade comparisons were helpful as well. Again, go into the store, get shade matched. That's gonna be your best bet if you uh, wanna try this foundation out. But let me know your thoughts. I know a lot of you were anxiously awaiting this video, so hopefully, it was able to help you guys uh, make a good buying decision. But let me know in the comments what you thought. I want to thank you guys so much for watching another one of my videos. You all have a great day or night, wherever it is you all are at. Stay hydrated, guys. Drink that water. And I will see you all very soon. Bye.